Do you want free Photoshop actions for portrait retouching? Well, I'm going to give you the exact actions that I use, show you how to install them, and show you how to use them right now. Hey everyone, I'm Josh Mills, and I'm going to give you my personal Photoshop CC portrait retouching actions. Also, keep watching as I show you how to install them, a quick overview of what they do, and also how to use them. Now, what I'm sure most of you are waiting for, the download link is in the description of the video below. You may want to go ahead and pause this video or save it to a playlist so you can come back and continue watching the rest of this video after you download those actions. Alright, if you just downloaded my actions and you're back to see how to install them, what they do, and how to use them, that's awesome. Make sure and leave a comment below and let me know. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is extract the zip file that you downloaded. This will give you five files and you need to go ahead and run all four excluding the important readme first text. All that readme first text says is you need to make sure and install all of the files for your actions to work. The reason is is there's also a brushes file and a gradients file and those brushes and gradients are used with the actions and if you do not have them installed the action will fail with an error all right as you can see in photoshop all i currently have are the default actions you do not need to have photoshop open when you run these files it will automatically place them in photoshop for you whether you have photoshop open currently or not all right so let's go ahead and double click on the gradients that will add the gradients to Photoshop. Double click on brushes. That will add the brushes to our Photoshop. Double click on image color grade. That's actually just an extra set of actions I've added for global color grading your images. It's just a bonus. And the final one is the Josh Mills Retouch version 4.3. And that will go ahead and give us all of the retouching actions for my portrait retouching. As you can see, they've populated over here in the Actions panel. If you're curious about the gradients and brushes, you can also open up your Gradients panel, and you'll see that I've added in some gradients here that are used for the skin tones and conversions. And if we open up the Brushes panel, you can see that I've added in some brushes. And these brushes are here so that the action can automatically select the tool, so you don't need to remember what tool to select and what settings to choose. All right, so now that I've showed you how to install the actions, let's go ahead and jump in and I'll run through what all the actions are, what they do, and a quick little overview of how to work with them. You might want to hit that subscribe button now as I'm going to be rolling out a whole portrait retouching series of videos here on YouTube, starting with one that covers the frequency separation. Okay, so we've got my retouching actions installed here in Photoshop CC. I'm currently running on version 21. You do need to make sure that you are running on the current version of Photoshop CC because there are certain tools in these actions that are only available in the latest versions of Photoshop, like the subject select. Now I'm going to give you a quick walk through each of these actions and show you how they work so you can take your images from something like this to this using these actions. So first off, we start off with frequency separation you'll notice there are actually two frequency separations in here, including a frequency separation repair. The frequency separation repair applies to this frequency separation full. So I'm going to go ahead and run this so you can see both in action. Whenever I run the frequency separation, it uses the median blur version of frequency separation. So you're going to want to go in, zoom in on your subject, and make sure that your blur is getting just the skin textures and the smaller blemishes out of the shot. And I'm happy with that. It will then prompt you again a second time. All you need to do is hit OK again. And it will finish creating the frequency separation stack. You will notice in the frequency separation stack that there are actually several layers. There is a detail boost, which is not visible. There are two high texture layers, the high texture and detail and the high working layer. And there are two low layers, the low color and tones and the low working layer. You will only be working on the working layers. So on the high working layer, the action has already 
pre-selected the clone stamp tool for you and set the proper settings for you. So all you have to do is go in and start making your selections and cloning out areas. So I can select some skin from here and remove blemishes. You're just going to hold the Alt key and select skin texture that's similar to the area you want to correct and remove the blemishes. Now, if you make a mistake and you clone some texture into an area that is not correct, so let's say I sample over here in an area with very little texture and I go over an area with a lot of texture, it now becomes a blurry space. All I need to do to correct this is reach over here and grab the lasso tool, circle that area, and then run the frequency separation repair. And what it does is it automatically goes down to the underlying layer, grabs a copy of it, and then merges it into the working layer. So that allows you to quickly jump back in, repair an area, so you can then continue to work on it. All you need to do is jump back on your clone stamp tool and keep on going. The low working layer, I use the mixer brush. And this is where you're going to work with your underlying tones and color. Here again, if you make a mistake by, say, blurring some color into the wrong area, all you have to do is go over, grab your lasso tool, circle the area where you made the mistake, and then hit that frequency separation repair tool. And again, it will go in and it will clone out the underlying color and fix the area for you. The frequency separation basic is basically frequency separation using the median tool also, but it only does the two basic layers. So if I run this, it's going to be the same thing. It will ask me how much blur I want to apply. I will find a happy place where the texture has been blurred out. Hit OK. It will prompt me again. So I will just hit OK the second time. No adjustments necessary. And you will see that it has only created a high layer and a low layer. So you don't have that safety net to run the frequency separation repair. Dodge and burn for my action, I use the curves adjustment layer. So if I run that, it will automatically create my dodge and burn layers. All they've done is created two curves adjustment layers with the layer masks on them. You've got one for dodge where it's lifting and we've got one for burn where it's darkening. It will automatically select the brush tool for you with the proper settings. If you find that it is not applying the effect fast enough for you, all you have to do is come up here and increase your flow. I would say no more than two or three, and this will allow you to apply the effect, the effect faster. All right, after Dodge and Burn, the Match Skin Hue is actually a tool to help you match skin tones. So what you want to do is just go ahead and run that tool. It will then pop up with a gradient map selection. All you need to do is click on the gradient map and there's a couple selections for you to make. First, you're going to select the shadows color right down here. Click on the color and it's gonna allow you to sample. So you want to sample from the area of skin that you want the other skin to match. So I'm gonna sample in the darkest area I can find in that skin and hit okay. I'm going to grab my mid-tone, and this time I'm going to sample from the mid-tones of that area of skin I want to match to. Hit OK. And then I'm going to grab my highlights, and I'm going to sample from the brightest highlight I can find in that skin tone that I want to match to. This is going to set the gradient map for you, so you just hit OK until you're out of it. And it creates a layer mask that's completely filled in. So all you have to do then is grab your brush, go up to 100% and then brush over areas that you want to match. So let's say I want her hand to match the skin tones of her face. I will just come in here, brush over this with white and it is going to match those skin tones. And then I can choose whether or not I want the effect to be stronger by grabbing the opacity and cranking it up or want it to affect it less by moving it down. All right. Below that, I have three set skin tones. These are global adjustments. These will not run on anything but the newest 
Photoshop CC, so 20 and above or 21 and above, where you have the select subject because it will automatically select the subject in your shot. And you will notice in the layer mask, it has now selected the subject and it has applied a skin tone to your subject. Here, you will need to go in and make some adjustments to the mask because in selecting the subject, it does not deselect the hair or the clothing. So all you want to do is make sure that you've got your paintbrush and that you're painting with black and you can go in and just paint over the areas you don't want this to affect. So now you can see that this has added tone and color to the skin and added some contrast. This one is using the gradient map, which if you grab the gradients over here, and expand out. You will also have my skin tones and we have a very warm, we have a neutral warm, we have a neutral cool, and we have a very cool. So you can actually adjust for different skin tones within these gradients. The next one down is a skin tones using color balance instead. So if I run that, again, it will select the subject and all we need to do is go through and clean up the mask with a black paintbrush so that it's not affecting the areas we do not want it to affect. The color balance actually affects the reds and yellows in the midtones highlights and then the shadows it avoids. So it gives a little bit different effect. And as you can see, this actually adds a lot more warmth to her without giving as much of a contrast difference. With any of these, you can always back off the opacity of the layer to take the effect down. So if I take this down to, let's say 40, you can see it's a very subtle change, but it is adding warmth and life to her. And then the final one is the skin tones using selective color. Again, this does a select subject. And we will go through with the black paintbrush and paint off any areas we do not want it to affect. But I'm doing this just to give you a quick overview. And again, this one actually goes in and does selective color for the skin tones, which are red and yellow. And you will see it has removed cyans and it has given a small bump to the magentas and yellows and a small bump to the blacks in both the reds and yellow channels. And again, here you can go in and back off the effect with the opacity of the layer so that you get subtle changes. So really it's find which one you like and use that one. After that, we have the eye enhance. I do have another video here on YouTube. I will link and it goes through the entire eye enhance action and how to use it but I will go ahead and run it now so you can see what it does. It will prompt you right now for some sharpening. It defaults to five pixels. I do not recommend staying that high. I usually fall somewhere between two to three and a half, depending on how much sharpening I want to add. And then you can see that it's created this group of eye enhance and you just go through and you paint on each of the layer masks to apply the effects. The, eye, the iris enhance will sharpen the eyes. And if they have lighter color eyes like hazel or blue, it will actually bring out the details more. The iris vibrance enhances the color of the iris. The iris highlight allows you to add the highlight into the area, and then you just back off the opacity of it to get the effect you want. Eye whites, reds, and magentas allows you to remove red and magenta from the whites of the eyes. And again, I always back this off because you don't want to completely remove all of the reds and magentas or else you end up with very gray eyes. The eye whites, blues, and cyans allows you to remove any blue 
or cyan color to the eye white. Again, back that off until you're happy with the results. You don't want to remove all the color because you don't want a flat gray for the eye white. And then the final is the eye whites brightening. This allows you to brighten the whites of the eyes. And again, you want to back this off until you're happy with just the brightness. And the key here is to just try and find what looks natural and not overdone. So you can see it's very subtle, the brightness that I've added to the eye there. Global sharpening is an overall sharpening of the entire image using the high pass filter. So if I run global sharpening, it will prompt me for sharpening. I would select an area so I can see how much sharpening I am applying. And then you can add as much or little sharpening as you would like. And you can see by zooming in, how much sharpening is being applied. Here I say go light. That's why it starts at 1.6. I usually find that I fall anywhere between 0.8 and 1.6 on my global sharpening, just to bring out some extra detail. The selective sharpening does exactly the same thing, but it also adds a layer mask to the adjustment layer. So you can then go in with a white paintbrush and you can paint over just the areas that you want to reveal the sharpening. So if I just want to sharpen the lips here, I will just brush over the lips and it will sharpen the lips for me. All right, and finally we have the custom vignette. The custom vignette, you'll just want to grab your lasso tool and this gives you the creative freedom to make your vignette any shape you want. It's not limited like the post crop vignette of other tools like Lightroom where it just comes in from the corners and you can only adjust the roundness and how far it comes in. So you can create the shape any way you want and then you just go over, run the custom vignette. It will prompt you for how much you want to blur the blur will affect how quickly the gradient falls off for the vignette. So if you bring this down, the gradient will be harder. If you bring it up, the gradient will be softer in the way it falls off. Once you're happy with the way the gradient falls off, you just hit OK. If the gradient is too strong for your taste, all you need to do is grab the opacity and slide the opacity down until you're happy with the amount of vignette you've applied. And you can toggle the layer on and off to see how it is affecting your image. All right, so I know this wasn't a full retouching tutorial. There is no way I could fit all of that into a short video like this, but don't worry. I will be taking the time to release a whole series of videos here on YouTube on full portrait retouching using these actions. Make sure to subscribe so you're notified as I upload those videos. I would love it if you dropped a comment down below and let me know that you've downloaded the actions and what you think. Y'all have a great day, guys.